Welcome to Spoiled to Perfection, the show that unlocks the magic behind food techniques such as pickling, fermenting, curing, spicing, salting, and curdling, just to name a few. Together, we'll explore how culinary alchemy enhances the raw flavors of foods in amazing and unexpected ways. Today, I'm meeting up with Jennifer Harris at Rick's Farm and Vineyard in Healdsburg, California. Jennifer is a local fermentation teacher and founder of the Farm to Fermentation Festival, and we're going to find out why she's so passionate about pickling and fermenting foods. And we might just get to pickle something ourselves. All right, let's go. Hey, Jennifer. Hey, Garrett. How's it going? Good, great to see you. Good to see you again. Isn't this a perfect day in Dry Creek Valley? Oh, it's gorgeous. Do you want to check out the greenhouse and see what fresh produce they have? Yeah, for sure, let's do it. Hey, did you notice bud breaks happened in a couple weeks earlier this year? I did. Man, harvest is quick. So, I know that people usually think of cucumbers when they think about pickles. Definitely. But in early spring, these fresh carrots are gonna be perfect for a recipe I have in mind. Wow, they, well, they're gorgeous. So, we're gonna pickle these carrots? Absolutely. All right. Let's get going. Yeah, let's do it. All right, so Jennifer, here we are at Relish Culinary Adventures in Healdsburg. Uh, this seems like a, such a cool place. Have you been here before? I have. I've gotten to teach, mm -hmm. also had the opportunity to work as a kitchen assistant, mm -hmm. and of course I've taken classes here too. So. Jennifer, tell me a little bit about your your background, your family. Do you, do you come from like a family of foodies? I mean, it seems like uh, you're you're very much bred up in it. I come from people that love food. I was very fortunate to have two sets of grandparents that loved making their own food, yeah. and parents that grew up making their own food. Well, I was able to grow up canning in the summer with my mom mm. and preserving. Yeah. I love teaching fermentation. I love teaching pickling. Um, just in the last five or ten years, I've decided that. It's my call in life to teach others <laughs> to make pickles. Nice, that's great. And so, so we have a couple examples of pickling and fermentation out here. Can you talk about these carrots a little bit? Absolutely, so we do. We have a vinegar pickled carrot uh -huh. here, and then we have a traditional fermented pickled carrot. A fermented pickled carrot. So if you'll notice actually the difference in these carrots, I don't yeah. know if you can tell, these are quite the brine is quite clear on these, yeah. and I can see the, the carrots, you know, in all their glory. Pretty clearly, yeah. It's looking a little different over here. Yeah, it looks a little murky and bubbly. We have a, a live fermentation process actually happening over here. That's and great. This traditional fermented pickle, mm -hmm. I didn't use any vinegar in. No vinegar. So what pickles it then, or what ferments it? What What's going on? So the process of fermentation, which I like to remind people is a living process. Oh yeah. It's a living exchange of mm -hmm. microorganisms. Mm. One organism is consuming another. Here, the organism is chewing through sugar and producing more lactic acid bacteria. Ah, which then is the vinegary flavor. Resulting in that very sour vinegar flavor that we know. Ah, so you're kind of like making your vinegar inside this jar? I couldn't have said it better. Well, what, did, what did you put inside here? The, actually, what we utilized were the organic carrots that we picked earlier this morning. When carrots are first pulled out of the ground, mm -hmm. They have really great bacteria on them. Hmm. So, so can we make one of these, do you think? Absolutely. Do you want to make some? Yeah, let's make some fermented carrots. Can we do it? Let's do it. Let's do it. So, Jennifer, what do you think about these aprons? I think they're pretty phenomenal. I think they're pretty cool, huh? Nice aprons. Thank you. I feel great in mine. Thank you. We're ready to get started on making some delicious pickled carrots. So one of the ways that we're doing them is with vinegar. Mm -hmm. So in this pot, we've got a cup of vinegar, two cups of water. Right. And I'm going to have you turn that on. Okay. And then we're going to add two teaspoons of our kosher salt. Great, all right, and then stir it in? Absolutely, and Great. then I'm also gonna add one tablespoon of sugar. And then the other carrot that we'll be making, another pickled mm -hmm. carrot, is a fermented pickled carrot. Okay. So for that, I'm gonna have you add one tablespoon plus one teaspoon of the uh -huh. salt. All right. And go ahead and stir it dissolve. This is gonna be our, our Great. salt brine. All right, I'll do I'm that I'm gonna right get here. started on these carrots. Okay. So the one of the great things about using fresh organic produce is that we just had to give these a quick rinse, but mm -hmm. I'm not gonna peel them. We value, as we already talked about, the natural bacteria that's on them. I'm gonna start on some of these bigger carrots 
just to bring them down to a half size so that they match these real beautiful, delicate, smaller ones. We're just gonna do about three to four coins of both our ginger and turmeric. I'll add two teaspoons of whole black peppercorns mm -hmm. to both of these. Although we're making two separate recipes, we're gonna be including the same spices and ingredients in both of them. They ah. work really nicely with both of these recipes. And we can compare later. Exactly. All right, awesome. Why don't you clean that up and sure. I'll give our ginger and turmeric a nice slice. So we're just looking for coins that are about mm -hmm. a quarter inch, an eighth of an inch to a quarter inch in thickness. We'll do three to four coins in this jar. I'm gonna reach right around you and put this in the compost. Perfect. So okay. I'm gonna go ahead and start packing into our jars. Okay. And if you'll notice, all of my carrots were lying one way when I was chopping them. Right. What I do is I sort of find about half of them mm -hmm. and move them the opposite way. Ah. That'll help them pack down into the jar a right. little bit better. Okay. So let's see how I did on size. We still have a couple that want to poke out a little bit, uh -huh. so I'm just going to take anything that looks like it's above my water level and give it one more... A little snip. ...half inch off. Hey, that's perfect to eat. <laughs> hey, they are delicious, fresh and mm. pickled. Mm-hmm. Super fresh. My yum. That's awesome. All right, let's go for this next bunch. Let's see, I can tell the couple mm. of ends are going to be a little bit thick. Great, those are fitting perfectly. So I've got our salt brine, you've got our vinegar brine. Got it going. Why don't we share our canning funnel? Yeah. Go ahead and add it to one of the jars. Sure. This is warm enough, we can turn, mm -hmm. go ahead and turn that off. We just reached a boil and it's come back down, it looks like to a little low simmer, yep. that's perfect. You can pour over either, go ahead for that pour one. Pour it right in. What we're looking for here is to pour it so it comes, it covers the carrots, and it comes just about a quarter inch below the rim of the jar. So Perfect, right that there. looks great. Perfect. I'll move this guy over, and I'll take our salt water brine, and we'll add this over our fermented carrots. Again, we just wanna make sure that we're covering them, that looks perfect. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add these ceramic weights mm -hmm. to our jar. Okay. And essentially all we're doing with these is wedging them down in so that they will keep our vegetables down under that lovely acidic brine that we talked about, which was what's gonna enable that bacteria to really proliferate and be delicious. Got it. So our work here is done. Once the vinegar jar cools, we'll put it in the fridge, and then after about 24 hours, we can enjoy them. Great. So these are gonna be having that delicious sour flavor real early on. We'll really get fast. into those, we'll be delicious tomorrow. Okay. Uh, these, however, we're gonna allow to ferment for a little while. Yeah. So we'll put them on our counter for about 10 days to mm -hmm. up to three weeks. Mm -hmm. And depending on the temperature of your home, mm -hmm. I don't know, I like to keep my house a little warmer than some people. I keep my house about 70, 72. Okay. Mine go real quickly. Got it. For the best flavor, we recommend between 65 and 85 mm -hmm. degrees, mm -hmm. about 10 days to 21 days of fermentation time. Sounds good. So we're just going to- put the caps on? Exactly. We're going to add a loose cap to the fermenting one. Mm -hmm. All that CO2 that will be escaping will need somewhere to escape to. So this loose lid will keep some- okay. Other, anything else out, yeah. and it'll allow the natural CO2 to still escape. Right. So we'll just leave that. Here, I'll take it. Perfect. And with this jar, we can go ahead and add it completely and tight. So right. once this cools, we'll put it in the fridge and then wait 24 hours. Mm -hmm. But you know what? I actually have some that I made a couple of weeks ago if you yeah. want to try. Yeah, absolutely. Is that what's right here? Bring it over. You want to split one with me? Yeah, let's do it. Need a fork? Yes, please. Here you go. So I'm just gonna have this guy. All right. For you. Mm. Mm. I really get the that acidity just sort of right up front and on the sides as it goes into the back palate. A little sweet up front. Mm -hmm. Nice what and a, sharp vinegar. But a great crunch very fresh and I get just that tiny little heat of ginger just just an edge of it Not love. very pleasant very good job very well done mm. 
I just heard it go. Letting out a little bit more CO2 mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. it is still fermenting. Okay. I still got my weights in here. Yeah, you can really see it fermenting. Wow. There's a lot of bubbles coming up wow. now. Wow. But it's gotten a little warmer. So Whew. the fermentation has really started right. to take off here. Let's take out one of these guys. Okay. You can hear it too. It's talking to you. A little snap crunkle. Yeah, right? Crackle bunch. Snap crackle pop. Okay, fermented carrot. Mmm. A little bit more raw feeling in the texture, right? It's not quite as um, cooked almost okay. as the other one. There's um, there's so much going on in there. Almost earthy, has a great spiciness. I get um, a real developed sourness around the sides and the back of my mouth instead mm -hmm. of Right up front, like the vinegar one mm -hmm. was. Yeah, yeah, it's like a, um, it's like like a harmony rather than like a single note. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? There's like there's just a lot of stuff going on, and it all is good together. It just works together. Whereas the other one was very much like a one or two note sort of sort of thing. I like that like analogy. A, it's like a whole guitar chord. I love that analogy. Right? Yeah. So you know, I make a lot of other fermented foods too. Yeah. Would you like to come try some? Please, yes. I'm having a little gathering at my house tomorrow. Maybe you could bring the wine. Sounds good. Awesome. Cool. I'll see you then. All right. I'll see you tomorrow. Great. Well, cheers, guys. 2014 Sauv Blanc. All right. I am so glad we were able to make it and get together today. I have some really yummy stuff to share with you. Are those the carrots that we made? They are. Yes. We have the traditional fermented carrot pickle, and we also have the vinegar pickled carrot. Mm, yum. I think you guys are gonna love these fermented carrots. Oh, man. I'm super excited about them. Fermented carrots? So in addition to the carrot pickles, yeah, yeah, we yeah. also have a variety of sauerkrauts. And here we have blue cheese, some gouda, and some aged cheddar. And then there's a copa and some prosciutto. And we also have salami. Let's All dig right. in. Let's do it, guys. <laughs> Great. Wow, what an amazing 24 hours it's been with Jennifer Harris. Learning about the difference between a traditional fermented carrot pickle and a vinegar carrot pickle and about how the naturally occurring bacteria from the ground is actually part of what makes these foods so amazing. And who knew there were so many fermented foods to pick from? Kombucha, kimchi, meats, cheeses, even chocolate? There's a lot to learn. So I hope you join us next time as we continue to explore culinary alchemy and unlock the magic of transforming raw ingredients into something that's spoiled to perfection. Spoiled to Perfection is brought to you by Bubbies. See us online at bubbies.com. And remember to eat my pickles, wear clean underwear, and marry a doctor.